Welcome, welcome everyone. I see some names, Evelyn, Leslie, Jennifer, Lyndall, Patricia, Paula. Welcome, welcome. We're just gonna give a few minutes so everybody has time to log in, make sure everything's working on their end, the sound. Bonjour, oh yes, Evelyn, yes. I know she speaks French and English, beautiful. Bonjour, hi, Leslie. Already 25. So we had like a hundred, over a hundred uh, registries. So we're gonna give the chance to um, everyone to come, for everyone to come. Wonderful. Hi, Vince. Hi, Zain. It's lovely. I'm recognizing some names from the community and probably our fellow artists as well, eh? Joseph, Tracy, and Diana have been quite active on the community, so I'm sure they, they recognize some names here. Hi, Joan. Hi, Helen. So just as people come in, you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, you can click on the chat option. The chat option gives you the opportunity to chat with everyone or to ask a specific question directly to either um, one of our team members and or to the artist directly if you'd like. Uh, if you feel it can benefit the community, which 99.99% of the time it would, please do share it in the, um, in the chat for everyone to see. Where it's written to, you can click and make sure you've selected everyone. That way we'll see the questions and answers. It'll also allow me to send you a transcript of the full chat at the end of the webinar when we send the thank you email. Hi, Eddie. Oh, Eddie, wonderful. Eddie is in California. She's a wonderful artist that joined the family and she recently uh, had a lovely virtual meetup with Medj, right? One of our, our longstanding artists as well that was part of our previous webinar. And uh, she actually had like a little Q&A where Medj explained how to host a fashion show and how she goes about it. Because I believe that Eddie um, is preparing, I think in a few months, Eddie, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, glad to read it was super useful. It's so funny when I talk like that, it's kind of like I'm talking and then some, somebody's talking in my head and then I'm just saying out loud my own conversation. <laughs> just yes, her show will be on April 23rd, wonderful. So it's nice to see it was, it was useful and I didn't even have to ask them. That's what I love. Like nobody of the team had to reach out. The community has just been so wonderfully self-sustained. Like everybody's just going of their own volition and sharing and connecting. Medj did this video, connected with Eddie. It's just been such a treat, you know? And as you know, we have over 15,000 artists right now. So it's been really growing. Um, and you'll notice on the Facebook community, we, all, we have about like over 200, close to 230 right now, because we haven't yet sent the invitation to our all our artist base because we want to be able to welcome everyone and, you know, just everybody gets settled in and kind of find their way around. And for the artists as well to connect uh, amongst themselves and offer more of a peer to peer connection. Um, we feel it would be it's easier than if, I don't know, thousands come at the same time. So rest assured the community will continue to grow that, this way but it's already been so, so beautiful. Hi, Valencia, bonsoir. Another bilingual artist from New York, wonderful. And Eddie was saying, yes, I reached out to her and Medj uploaded the video. She tried to do it live, but could not do it. We'll be happy to, yes, we'd love to. And you know, Eddie and everyone, we will be um, hosting as the community grows and we implement um, some tools on the actual Facebook platform. We will be hosting live Q and A's and virtual uh, events. Um, I remember Melissa, she's one of our newly joined artists, high enthusiasm as well, which was saying like, man, I wish there was like a LG convention for all the artists, you know, like where we could meet live. So until we can do that, because it is part of our plans um, to have some sort of, you know, physical meetup, uh, we'll be able to do that virtually. So definitely. Yes, I love seeing my hearts. Hi, Carol, recognizing some familiar names. Uh, we're still only at 34 attendees, so thank you all for being so patient with us. We'll just give a few more minutes um, so everybody can join. And as you know, it's always recorded, so we'll send you the recording uh, most likely on Monday, so you can uh, watch it again. Sun Shower Rose. Wow, what a beautiful name. Hello from Sedona. Yes, yes, Arizona. April from Texas. And Michelle from Marie's. Callie, this is wonderful. 
<laughs> yeah, we're super excited too, Michelle. This is really, it's really wonderful. Welcome, Rax. First time coming. That's be oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. I mean, we feed off of each other. Right? It's been mirrors, you know. It, it it's it wouldn't be warm and heartfelt if we didn't have that kind of a genuine connection with the artist. So it's it's really wonderful. <laughs> Bonnie, hi, yes. Long Beach, California. Hi, Diane. Toronto, some Canadians represent. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, well, I think we can get started. Wonderful. Yes, Bonnie from Florida. <laughs> Carrie, our marketing director that you can see here, is from Florida as well. Um, she's moved to Quebec in the past years, but uh, she's our true Floridian as well. Jam Lando, as she likes to say, Orlando. <laughs> Um, so that's a perfect opening to introducing you to Carrie. Carrie is our new marketing director. She's been with us since January. Um, for those of you who've connected with us in the past, maybe through the webinars or even through email, Catherine with a K uh, is our marketing director and chief of staff. And she's been with the company for about five years. She's Thierry. Thierry RC is our CEO. She is his right hand. Um, she just left for her maternity leave. She's expecting, I think, March 7th or 8th, uh, her baby boy. So um, Carrie is uh, hopping on as marketing director. She's there to bring also a uh, new vision as well and help just improve what we've already set in place that's working wonderfully, but that we want to fine tune um, in the way that we were sharing that Le Galeries, I was sharing this with our, our three uh, artist panelists uh, just before you guys hopped on. The goal of Le Galeries is to really um, disappear as a brand we don't want to be in the limelight we want to be the bridge for you into the fashion world so we want to fuel you um and i love when thierry says like art by tracy fueled by le galerie is powered by le galerie so we're really in the back in the backstage of things you know us because we're there to support you but in the daily like external activities and the marketing we're not there so much carrie is going to really bring that extra boost to us this year and uh, already great ideas have been have been opening up for the team and we're all working together on them. So it's, it's really wonderful. I don't know if you wanna say a few words, uh, Carrie, just say a little hi so they hear your beautiful voice. <laughs> hi everyone, thanks Julie. Thanks so much everyone for being here. Our panelists of beautiful artists, we love and appreciate you. And as I mentioned earlier, when I got to meet you earlier, just uh, we wouldn't be here without you and we're so thankful. I'm, so grateful to be a part of this family and the community of what we're doing because we're so unique and authentic. And I really think that that just shines on what you guys do so well. So I'm so thankful to be a part of the movement where we get to be more in the background and just giving you that uh, propulsion and momentum and all the tools that can really help you do what you do so well already naturally. So we're really, really enthusiastic about what's coming this year. And we've been talking, Julie and I have been discussing and Terry as well of putting together a webinar just for you, um, established artists that have already been going for a while and tune in on some things that we can do even to make the journey better for you and, and just some tips and ideas of how we can make it better for everybody. So we really want to make you a part of everything that we're doing. Um, that's the heart of our culture. So thank you so much for being here today and all the newcomers, we're so grateful to have you. You're gonna be really, really uh, taken care of in this community, Julie and all the team, uh, we're here to support you on the, on the whole journey and all the artists that have been ongoing with us, just thank you for all your continued gifts and support that you give us. We're, we're so grateful to have you. So thanks, Julie. And thank you, Carol, for the congratulations. Appreciate that. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Carrie. And yes, Sunshower Rose, to answer your question, I can only see the speaker, but no one else. Is there a way to see all? So yes, if you go at the top of your screen, I'll say it out loud so everybody can do it. You see a little um, button that says view. If you click that, you can either choose to select the speaker, uh, which is nice for the presentations of the three artists because we'll really be focusing on them. But you can also choose to go with the gallery view. If you prefer that, then you'll see everyone at the same time. Um, you can also go at attendee, attendee view just lower. You could do follow hosts view, just the speaker or the gallery. So you can play around with that. Does everybody see that? Sunshine Rose, does that answer your question? If not, you can just, um, no, okay. Uh, maybe I can ask my fellow teammates because I'm the host, so my screen might look different. Leah, Carrie, uh, do you see, Daniela can't um, speak right now because there's construction in her building. So she'll be, you all know Daniela, right? I'll, I'll just uh, go into that. She'll be here to answer all your questions on the chat to help me out. Um, she's our marketing coordinator and uh, dedicated customer care 
um, support as well. So she'll be here to answer the questions, but I can't ask her to voice right now because there is a lot of construction in her building. It might be too noisy. So right now, there's something, Carrie. Um, you should be able to um, see the toolbar at the bottom. If you touch your screen or any of your key down buttons, Sunshine, Sunshine Rose, beautiful name. You should see participants um, as a tool. If you click that, it should show you all the participants. And then you should also see a chat option in the chat. It'll show who's speaking and what's being said and things like that, but you found the chat because you're answering chat. So next to chat should be participants. If you touch that, you should see. Oh, wait, I think it's there. because of the mode that we have where they don't have their camera and their mics just be, to, to be able to, um, to uh, centralize the traffic so it doesn't become too much. Because yeah. when there's a lot of people, people unmute them by uh, themselves by accident. I think we don't have that view. I think that's what I'm figuring out right now. I'm so sorry about that. Let's see the options. Is this? I think she'll just be able to see yeah. everyone's name if she wants to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At least we can do that. And I could definitely look into it <clears throat> for the next one to see if we can offer something better. But the good news is the main focus is the speaker. This was just a, a, a long introduction to how to go around it and, and introduce everybody. But once the artists will be talking, they're the focus anyway. So you will see them um, in a front, like front row screen. So um Carrie, we've done Daniela, you know. Um, and then we have Leah. She is one of our newcomers as well. So she has joined the um, two big, very important teams uh, at Le Galeries, the customer care team, which she's already doing amazing on. So you might notice if you've uh, messaged one of our three customer care inboxes, you might have seen her name, uh, received her warm, heartfelt touch as well. Um, and she's always she's also joining the marketing team as our social media curator. She'll be working on a bunch of different projects as it is with Le Galeries. Nobody has one set corner. We're all intertwined, um, but mainly the customer care and the artist experience and the marketing will be her main, uh, her main avenues of work. And soon she will um, be able to uh, feed our social media more as she uh, continues to learn about the community and brings her a special touch. So we're happy to have you, Leah. Do you want to say a quick hello? Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. I really recognize some names. Um, I, I know I've only been here a few weeks, but I do recognize, like, for example, Sunshower, uh, Rose. Sorry, Sunshower Rose. I love your name. <laughs> um, uh, thank you all for being here. I'm really excited, especially like uh, everyone being so nice, like Julie, Carrie, Daniela, um, so nice to meet you all. I'm really excited, especially to start in the social media channels as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm really excited and thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Leah. My pleasure. So much, so much love in the team and the community. It feels like we're really one big, like that's why I love to say family. It really feels like that. And hopefully that's what you feel. And Hopefully we can continue to offer that. You know, I feel that's the core of who we are. So I trust that that'll be the case. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. I think we're, we're, we're pretty good now to start with the artists. I wanted to make sure as many people could come so we don't miss it, um, but the recording will be sent out later. So we will start without further ado with our dear Tracy, um, the ones that have been part of the community, I've seen her. I'll let her do her own intro as will be the case for the other artists. Um, feel free to direct your questions uh, in the chat for everyone, even if it's specifically for Tracy, that way we can all benefit and uh, we'll let her take the floor. And if anything specific comes up, we can ask uh, once she's uh, done sharing with us. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. Hi there. Hi guys. So <laughs> I'm going to start out by like showing you what I'm wearing today. So I have my kimono and then um, the Kate dress underneath. So and do a little fashion show as a must before we begin. And I'm gonna um, um, share my screen to show you my presentation that I prepared for you, okay? So, let's see. Can everyone see my screen okay? Good? Okay. Great, yes. Great. Yes. So I'm Tracy Jen, I'm... Um, I'm from West Lafayette, Indiana, so in, I'm in the U.S. Um, and my my parents are immigrated from Taiwan, and so this is the my work, and I think my whole fashion journey. It's really it's about my identity and my story, and sort of wrapping this all together <laughs> in a brand, so you can see how like um, I like sort of layering things right so like sometimes it's the using a model sometimes it's collaging sometimes like okay what would it look like if 
So I have my painting on the clothing, but what if I put the clothing back into the, the artwork and then it becomes an ad and it also becomes um, like an art print that it can sell. So it can have uh, many different ways of being. Um, yeah, and so <laughs> an interesting thing about me when I was little is that my dream was to be a um, American Girl doll, like catalog model, like that's what I wanted to do is just be a model. And I never thought that I would actually be like modeling my own clothes. So, um, but here I am, this is what I'm doing. I'm like much older than I thought, like I would be like really, really cute <laughs> and be the model, but no, much older now, but, um, but it still works, right? And um, something that I found really interesting about the clothing is that it's really great. You know, you can have, um, it doesn't matter what age you are and you can still feel beautiful in your garment. And I, I've had um, customers call, call my clothes silks. Like, I love your silks. <laughs> and I think it's funny. Um, and people are commenting, Tracy, if I may, because you're taking a little pause, that you are very cute indeed, really cute. And we see it in all your responses, you know, your way you reply, there's so much care and innocence and sweetness, you know? So you definitely still have that shining through. For I, sure. I try. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, when I was little, this is what, um, my sister is four years older than me, and this is what we do when we're little. Um, we fill up notebooks filled of these um, girls, these dolls, and then we um, designed their clothes. So each of them, they have different clothes and they have different names. And so we ran out of um, like names from the baby book. <laughs> we like search up names and then we have to start repeating their names because you know there's not enough. <laughs> and so you can see on the top row is my sister's work, her drawings. And then on the bottom, <laughs> since I'm younger, the bottom is me. <laughs> and so you can see our, our you know, you know, our hand, the way our hand draws things is it's completely different. Hers is like much more elegant. So when I was little, I wanted to copy her, like everything she did is what I was going to do, right? Uh, and drawing is one of them. And um, somehow this is the start to my journey. And this is what propelled me to um, go into art, enter the, you know, be an artist. <laughs> so, um, and so, um, for college, I went to Indiana University and studied um, um, my BFA in painting. And so on the left here is one of my paintings. So um, I, during college, I started drawing like super, painting on super large scale um, paintings um, and really honing into like, you know, what are, what are the paintings about? And then, you know, um, trying to paint things that are meaningful to me. Um, uh, the painting here is about the um, the Western zodiac, <laughs> and so there's a you can find the zodiacs inside the painting. And something that I really like is this idea of like um, human art interaction. So this idea of like okay, people can look at the painting, and it's like a little like a game where you can like find things and search for things. Um, and I this this one on the screen is a unique. Um, project that it did for um, I, I, I guess a, a client commissioned this project, the suit that you see here. Um, it's his um, design that he drew, but he didn't know how to go about like painting the suit. And then, so I took the project on to help him paint the suit um, to his design. And then both of us um, went and seek, um, put sequins onto the entire suit. So every single color that you see, it's the like Aurora, um, but every single color is a different color sequin. And so we spent a lot of times like putting like gluing sequins on there. I mean, it was crazy. Um, but the suit was made for this, it, it was a male pageant show. Uh, it was a super cool project, but it this sort of got me into like clothing and the idea of painting on clothes because I only knew how to paint. I don't know how to sew or, or do any of that other stuff, right? So I'm like, okay, how do I paint clothes? So then I did some other projects along with this where I started using fabric fabric paint to paint on clothes. But what it did was like, it hardened, <laughs> it hardened the clothes and made your clothes really stiff. So it's like, it doesn't quite work. Like it was a really cool experiment, but it doesn't quite work. And so then you can see why I like, 
the galleries, what you guys are doing is it's really helping me a lot. <laughs> um, and then uh, with the leftover paint from the suit is what I used to paint this painting with. And so this is uh, this project. Uh, okay. And then um, for grad school, I went to Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. Um, and there I studied um, curatorial practice. So it was really all about like event planning, um, planning art exhibitions, um, like coordinating and all of that. And um, the picture here is um, from my thesis project where I, um, this is a show I curated. Um, uh, that also has to do with like culture and identity. Um, this one um, is in a like, I guess you would call this a, a like white wall gallery, right? This is very, you know, pretty um, typical sort of traditional style of where an exhibition of art could exist. Um, but the question I have for you guys is, you know, where do you think an art exhibition can exist? Or you know maybe it's a fashion exhibition. Where can it exist? And if if you have ideas, um, go ahead and type it into the chat. Um, but I'm gonna sort of try to stretch your mind of you know alternative exhibition. Okay. So for example, if you had an exhibition in the sky, what would that look like? It would you know it could be a light show. It could be fireworks. It could be you know floating lanterns in the sky, and that would be an exhibition. Right. And on the ground, you could have um, uh, maybe you've guys seen chalk art, 3D, you know, floor paintings, or maybe you're in the forest and then you have a rock and leaf arrangement on the ground. Um, you know, um, and what about public art? You've guys been in um, cities um, on the sidewalks or on the side of a building or maybe um, on a fence or on a pole, sometimes you see those like um, yarn or like knit um, knit designs like on a tree or something. So there's a lot there, you know, public art could be in a, the middle of a city, it could be in a park. You know, what if we had a fashion show in a park? What would that look like? Okay, and then you have your, you know, some more traditional like art fairs, you know, um, around the fountain or by the courthouse or something, right? And then, but what if you had a, van and you took the van and drove it across the country you know and you know what would what would that be like um and maybe you open the van or a truck or whatever and then you're like selling the clothes out from the truck uh and you could park it in a college town and maybe see if you know students are attracted to it or you know you know get your brain i'm just helping you brainstorm okay <laughs> think outside the um, box it's awesome tracy and just to just to not to interrupt you but just to share the feedback is really amazing like just sharing from childhood like all your sketches and everything that's really great <laughs> somebody evelyn was asking your about your calligraphy scroll so that was part of your yeah um, these are other artists things. work yeah, yeah this is all other artists work but i curated it so um oh, i cool. chose the work to be in the show yes. and it's part of a theme Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, let's see where I'm at. Right. And the other thing to think about um, is what environment matches with your own art theme. So whether, you know, what relates to your art. So maybe you're doing um, animal paintings and maybe you can collaborate with a zoo. Like maybe you can just, you know, write an email or get to know them and see, you know, what's the potential of, you know, kind of having an exhibition there. Right. Or um, if you're doing like um, plant nature paintings, maybe maybe you could collaborate with a bontan uh, botanical garden. Um, right. Or maybe it's a beauty shop. Maybe it's a um, like if it's more like street style clothing, maybe this art exhibition is at a warehouse kind of space. Right. Um, Maybe it's a little bit more elegant. Maybe it's at a historical home. Maybe it's at a hotel, um, right? And these are places that you could have art exhibitions. You could have fashion shows there. Um, it could be a photo or video like set location um, that you can pick, but whatever it is, remember that you are your brand and you control the story of your brand. And part of picking the environment is also part of that story. 
um, people buy because they feel a specific emotion and connection to your artwork. <laughs> and um, so then um, moving on, like after I graduated <laughs> from grad school, I, um, it was, it's COVID, it was the middle of COVID. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, how am I supposed to find a job during COVID? And then um, during, and then I started, um, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna start my own business <laughs> and then um, sell art, sell art prints, and then just sell art products and see, see where that goes. And then I'm also, I have multiple streams of income, not just one. So um, the main thing I do is like also teaching. So it's like teaching plus the art products and all of this. and then. Um, on my Facebook just popped out the galleries and I'm like, oh, wow, this is like my dream come true. Like, this is all I ever wanted is just like my artwork on clothing. <laughs> so um, I thought like, why not? Let's do this. And what was unique about the galleries um, is I like how the, the artwork is like on the whole outfit, not just like a sticker on the shirt. Um, so I thought that was what was like really unique about it. And then when I received the clothing actually like um, in a package and opened it up, I was like, oh wow, this is so soft. <laughs> it's like, so me, it, it felt like so comfortable. So me, um, perfect. And then, um, so these four paintings here on the screen are from my, um, I guess it's like my original, like artwork that I submitted to the gallery. So it's like sort of my base um, clothing patterns in a way. Um, what's unique about these four paintings is that I don't own any of them right now. And so in a way they're like, um, it's like a rebirth for these paintings to be on clothing and then just like sort of like recycling using these um, paintings or patterns again, and then just giving it new life, um, which, I think is really unique and um, yeah, so a lot of the themes here specifically is about sort of like a more fantastical, whimsical nature. And then um, some of the artwork, it also talks about, you know, like the people I've met in my life and then um, kind of like pa painting stories around um, my friends um, and like things that they like, things that I like, so these animals and stuff, okay. Um, yeah. And then, so this idea of like recycling, right? I'm like, in a way I'm trying to reuse everything. So all of these four paintings I um, painted in, in college. So it was like quite a long time ago, but I'm just like, okay, I'm just gonna go with um, these images. And then I started doing these like Photoshop, right? Like if I have a model, like a friend, take a picture for me and then send it to me and then but but usually the pictures they send me the background doesn't look as good it's like really messy in the background and then so I ended up just like erasing the background and then just like like repainting it digitally because digital is a little bit faster um, for me to churn out the work um, so I've got these and then um, for like photography something that I would recommend is like during like spring, summer, whenever the sun is out, just go outside, take pictures. It's just, you know, perfect weather and perfect lighting. Um, and sometimes during the winter, it's hard. Like how do we get the good lighting inside the house, right? Um, but if you go outdoors, it's the best. And then make sure like the sun is like on the side or in the front, don't have the sun in the um, behind you because then it's gonna be backlit, which means that you're your face is, is gonna be in shadow and it just, it doesn't look as good. So make sure your sun is in the front. And then um, as long as you go out in a sunny day, you're good to go. Um, if you go out on a cloudy day, it's <laughs> I don't recommend that, don't do it. <laughs> um, and I'll show you, um, I've been, sometimes I do these reels. Um, he said one day you leave this world behind, so live a life you will. Remember, he said one day. So with these reels um, on Instagram, I'm just shooting them, but I'm also trying to do like, make it into like a little story or something. So I'm, I always think a lot about storytelling, even though I'm not painting, maybe I'm doing something else creative, whether it's photography, video, I'm always 
still thinking about storytelling. Um, and for the specific location is um, at a historic mansion. And so that's, I don't know, <laughs> I thought it was nice. And I mean, there's a background story. I don't want to get too much into it, but um, I think it's, um, I just want to pick, you know, pick a pretty location and then show off the clothing. <laughs> Um, and then, um, so you see, I was dancing in that video. It also has to do with my childhood because, um, uh, my, me and my sister used to dance ballet. So every winter, um, we perform in the Nutcracker Ballet, like every single year, <laughs> that's what we did. And so it, it has a big, um, impact on me. And so this winter <laughs> I was just reflecting on that and I, I was like, okay, why don't, I'm just going to make a Nutcracker series, but I'm, I'm going to reinterpret it. And then I'm going to like, you know, turn, um, have the characters wear my clothing. <laughs> and so I did this using the Procreate app. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a little um, example of what the app looks like a little bit later, but this is just to give you a sense of like what the real clothing looks like versus my, my, narrative ad okay and here i've got um, mother ginger in um, my poncho and then the gingerbread um the ginger children in the um the bunny shirt in the on the right the yellow one and this is the um, chinese tea dance uh yeah so a lot of just reinterpretation <laughs> of um, the Nutcracker. Just so creative. And this is the headband. It's so too. creative. <laughs> the headband is very comfortable, by the way. It's very, it's like much thinner than I thought it would be, but it's really nice. And not too tight because sometimes I have, <laughs> I have a big head, but I feel like it's, it's perfectly comfortable. It's not too tight. And headbands, I often feel like they're too tight. <laughs> yeah. And um, here's the Spanish dancer and uh, the Spanish chocolate dance. And what I really like about the skirt itself and well, most of like Le Galerie's clothing is the seams are like perfectly like symmetrical and beautiful. And that is so unique. And you, I don't think that you'll find that anywhere else. <laughs> um, I think that's like one of the coolest things that I, I found here, yeah. Uh, and here is the, uh, the, the Carla Palazzo pants here in the uh, the Arabian dance. And Tracy, if I may, is this also with the Procreate app? Some people are asking. Yes, yes. this is all. So whether it's the ones with the models or the illustrations are all with the Procreate app. And um, here's my last slide. So it's perfect. We can, um, I can show you what the app actually looks like. Okay. Okay, and I have a small sample here. Um, am I on the screen though? Can... Uh, yeah, it looks good. If you can uh, heighten it, it'll just, yeah, like that, perfect. That's okay, great. so there, you know, there's a few things that you can do, right? Like if I want to put this new um, tunic onto me. <laughs> so um, here, the, here, on this tab over here, there's different layers. And so each layer, what that means is that like, I can have like my model on one layer, I can have the other clothing on one layer. And when you lock the layer, like say I lock this model, when I lock this layer, it means that when I work, I have to select this layer, but if I work on this layer, I can move this around or draw on this layer without interfering with my model. So I'm not gonna like accidentally make a mark on the model and then have to like, like I don't know what to do with it later, right? Like um, you can lock it and it protects um, that layer, okay? And so um, moving, if I were to want to move this uh, tunic around, um, I have my pen outside of the rectangle and it can move around. And so I can move it here, I can resize it. Oops. And if I make a mistake, I can go back here. I can go back. Um, 
it's because I have it on distort, but uh, uniform. And there's some tools here called freeform, uniform, distort, and warp. And it, it just has to do with uh, like how you manipulate the size of things. So I can measure it with the same size as her. And <laughs> um, right, I can choose to distort it if it needs to be at a certain angle. I can distort it like this. This needs to be higher. This shoulder needs to be lower. Um, I can even warp it. So I can make the shape warp. So it fits some of the curves a little bit better, right? And match it together. Anyway, so like this is what warping does, okay? Um, and then um, in my other like time-lapse video that I did, um, I sort of showed how the sleeves work. If I were to manipulate the sleeves, I would choose this cut tool up here, this curvy one, and then I could select a sleeve and then select it with the arrow here. And then I can like, I can move this, I can rotate this, right? I can do different things with it right? and I can warp it, right? So I can, if I warp this, then, you know, I can change it and give it a certain like angle or something like that. And then, and then like put it, oops, and then put it back together. Anyways, I can reattach the sleeves, but when I do reattach, for example, when I do reattach the sleeve, they, there might be some gaps and that's when I use my coloring tool and just recolor everything. Okay, um, but just to get, give you some sense of what the other tools are like, if I, okay, I'm just gonna like erase this layer. I just don't want that tunic to be there, okay? Um, and maybe I'll show you all the different brush tools there are. You, there's sketching tools, inking tools, drawing, painting, artistic calligraphy, airbrushing, textures, abstract, charcoal elements, um, spray paints, vintage, luminance, um, industrial, organic, and water. Like there's all different kinds. So you can really mimic a lot of real life coloring tools. Um, for example, like elements, uh, like I'll show you like clouds. <laughs> I use this a lot. Um, so like if I have, and then I remember this layer is, is locked. So I have to um, go to the other layer, which is the background layer. Okay. But that's what like a cloud effect would look like. Okay. If I were to like here, ocean, and then show you like, this is what like, ocean would look like, right? Um, and I'll show you one that I think is pretty cool is this um, nebula. And then, oops, right. maybe do this on another layer. So you see it, but I saw this is like the nebula tool and you have different, like it looks a little bit more shiny and there's like so many different tools. Uh -huh. but it's like something you can play with. And then the size here, this controls the size. So the size of your brush tool or your drawing tool. And down here is the opacity. So you can control the transparency of everything. And then up here is another tool is the blur tool. So like for sometimes for like skin, you can airbrush the skin. If you have like pimple or something, <laughs> you can airbrush it, um, right? And, when, and this one, it kind of like mixes the colors together. I mean, there's so many things and, you know, it's something that like, I think you guys will have fun. Oh, it's wonderful, it. Tracy. Um, it's really and it's not just the Procreant yeah. app. It's, um, there's different alternatives as well. Um, so like search for some sort of Photoshop alternative and, you know. And I, I told them, Tracy, that because people were asking about Android and I remember you posted on the Facebook community, like alternatives, alternatives to the Procreate 
uh, app on Android. So I'll share that in the thank you email. Mm -hmm. I'll copy paste what you wrote to them and I'll, we'll send that for you guys that are working with Android. And um, Neil, another artist, part of the com community, I'm not sure if he's here uh, today. He also does work like uh, Tracy, puts the garments on actual uh, humans, uh, human models, and it's been really beautiful. And he uses Corel, but I know Photoshop does similar things. So not to get too detailed, but at least you know um, that it exists. And so since so many of you have been asking about human mock-ups, right? Not just a, a silhouette. Um, these are tools that you can work with, uh, you know, for now. And also uh, Thierry the CEO just gave his okay. Obviously you already had it, but it wasn't publicly announced that you can use all our photos on the website. All the models you see, um, feel free to use those. Like Tracy, she had won one of the packages with the levels where she could do that, but you can do that right now as well if you like to play around like she does. Um, take the models, do whatever you'd like and add your own garments. They're all yours. And Thierry's currently looking um, uh, into a way that we could just give you access to a public file where all our model and our model shots will be. So you can uh, go into that. You won't have to search through the website and do all that. And we'll bring them uh, into the highest quality possible for you to use. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll stop at this point for now. Thank you so much, Tracy. Like the comments are really You've inspired so many already. Um, it's really wonderful to see. Everybody really gives you props, amazing feedback. So I think this has been very enriching for, for everyone, right? Thank you so much, Tracy. Hopefully Tracey. that's helpful to you guys. I feel it is. I definitely feel it is. Um, thank you so much, dear. So now on to Joseph. Um, he's also one of our fellow artists that have been with us for about a year. And I'll let him take the floor and introduce himself because who better, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, wow. I kind of wish in a way I'd been first because I don't want to follow that. That was amazing. Um, so yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Joseph. I, I am in the Portland, Oregon area. Uh, I joined uh, LG just about exactly two years ago. Uh, it was February of 2020, I think. And um, this was not, this was the last thing really that I expected that I would be doing. I sort of told the participants this before we started, but um, I had been making wall art pretty unsuccessfully. Um, hadn't really sold any prints or anything like that, but uh, I did have a client who had asked me about making a t-shirt available. And a lot of what I found uh, is Tracy had sort of alluded to was uh, sort of like that, you know, the box that you get uh, on, you know, Tee Public and Redbubble and that sort of thing, like basically any shirt company, which is not what I wanted. Um, I thought that there had to be something that was a little different. And I got really lucky, uh, just sort of on a random Google search, uh, LG came up. And I think at that time you could upload five designs uh, as mock-ups. And I did it and I didn't, you know, I didn't really think anything of it. And then they came back, the, the mock-ups came back and it was not like anything that I'd really ever seen before. And I posted it uh, to, uh, to my personal Facebook and also to Chromatic Verse, which is my artist um, name. And I, I genuinely thought that I was going to have like one or two people who were like, oh yeah, that's actually pretty cool. And to my surprise, uh, a lot of people were like, that's um, like, please let me pay you. Like I need all of that. And then it just sort of, it just sort of exploded. Uh, I wish I had uh, thought to incorporate uh, images of my work uh, which I didn't because frankly, I didn't think of it. Uh, my website, uh, which I can put in the chat is chromaticverse.com. I think everything I've made is there. I am also wearing um, a Kiki Plus uh, shirt uh, of my own work and I am wearing one of the kimonos as well. Isn't it um, fun to see a man wearing the kimono? Because we have so many requests about it, but I, we see it through emails one-on-one, -on -one, but we don't get to see it publicly so much. So. I'm so happy you're wearing one, Joseph. Like I said earlier, thank you for showing us a bit of oh, the and the look. You're, you know? you're welcome. Like, and I actually had a couple weeks ago, I think, uh, somebody else, like a, another plus size man like myself, uh, had ordered one as well. Um, the thing that I make sure that I tell people uh, when I'm talking about clothing specifically too is that, like, they're skeptical sometimes, you know, because the kimonos are uh one size fits all and it, you know if you're somebody my size you're skeptical of that 
the thing is they really are i mean i'm a you know 3xl normally sometimes 4xl person and i mean it's it's more like a uh like a very long shirt but i can absolutely wear it and it looks really cool so um you know they they really are uh one size fits all um so i try to emphasize that when i can um let's see approach i i try to be very collaborative and open with my uh with my people uh i'm just sort of jumping around i'm really nervous so uh you're doing sorry great, about Joseph. That. no uh, you're doing great you're doing great can you stand up we've had a request to see uh the whole uh kimono in its uh, uh okay story. Yeah. uh yeah okay so because well, we do get a lot of questions about the sizing and the design team and sandrine the lead designer has um worked on the size chart to make it even more precise but it's always the yeah. best to see it on you you know it's, yeah it i mean i know with the light and everything it's not great i do have like actual like good photos that i've taken of it i can get those out or, or post people are saying or, we love you joseph whatnot. everybody oh, this is great thank you. this thank is you great. So do you want to share a bit about uh because what you shared with us earlier that i found very interesting about the cruise and about how you're connecting with customers that are not in north america and how they're yeah okay so um the cruise actually ties into a lot of this for me um 10 years ago i went on this cruise that uh it's a nerd cruise they bring on um you know, uh, nerdy musicians and writers and entertainers and such. Um, we couldn't do it last year for obvious reasons. We are doing it this year. Everybody is masked. There's all kinds of, you know, vaccine requirements and such. So it's going to be as safe as we can make it. Um, a large part of why I think this happened uh, for me is because uh, a lot of those folks who have gotten to know over the years, um, they have really liked my artwork but they're not the kinds of like they, they don't buy wall art necessarily but they like seeing me post pictures of things um when this became a possibility i got a lot of support from those people and like they uh on my initial post about it a lot of people were like you know i, I love your work but frankly i'd never buy it but on clothing, on something that's functional, on something that like I can wear out in the world, uh, that is an entirely different thing. And I tend to do mostly abstracts and I'm told that my work translates really, really well to that. I, I guess I kind of agree. Um, I'm not the best person to, to judge that, but that's what I'm told. Um, the, the thing that Julie's referring to is that um, because a lot of these folks were uh, like really the core of how I started, a lot of them own a lot of stuff that I've made and uh, like consistently have been the strongest, uh, you know, reorders and things like that. Um, I do have through this cruise, I've met people from all over the world. Uh, a lot of them, you know, follow me on Facebook. And there's a lot of people that are like in the UK and other parts of Europe who would love to order my stuff. And currently they can't. I do understand that that might be coming later. Yes. I, we're yeah. working on it for later this year, we're hoping, but we don't like to promise a set date because if things of change course. and we yeah. need to make it better, we don't want to disappoint you, but it's definitely in the cards and in the in yeah. the NCIE's vision, yes. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a question that I've gotten uh, on a on a number of items, and uh, particularly with like with the wrap dresses. Once those got introduced a couple months ago, um, so it turns out that uh, on this cruise that's happening in a week, I am taking several items of clothing with me for the uh, UK folks who can't normally get it, because there are going to be other people from the UK that are going to be on that boat. So we're going to do a handoff and they are going to ship it locally which is going to be possible the other kind of neat thing that i found out hopefully is going to be happening is that a photographer who's also part of this group of people um, has offered if there's time to basically have me arrange an all lg photo shoot uh, because i know that there's going to be 
probably at least two dozen people there who have had at least something that I've made. Uh, so it is very possible I could come back and I could have like this professionally done uh, shoot. Uh, the photographer, it turns out, is also somebody who has ordered my stuff. So it, I'm finding that too. Um, oh, um, the website that I'm currently building also, um, the way that we started that, uh, I'm currently having my, um, my art gallery website redone, is that a friend of mine who is in marketing uh, had offered to help me with it in exchange for uh, a cape dress. Like I had posted uh, one of the reversible dresses and she was like, oh, that would that would be so amazing. I would love that. And uh, we sort of worked it out where I'm basically paying her in clothing. Because uh, she's like, that. I mean, I'm going to yeah, buy so it anyway. Like a direct so. exchange, eh? I was going to yeah. say, you know, the photographer and things like that. Sorry, yeah, I mean, didn't, hop, didn't want to hop on you there. No, 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 not at all. I mean, she's like, basically, I'm going to buy it anyway. So, uh, you know, let's just do that and make it easier. Um, yeah, these these folks, they've really been uh, very, very supportive of me. And through them, I'm also able to find other avenues. Uh, for example, there's a cruise group that focuses entirely on people making things. And it's usually, you know, people who do sewing and um you know make stickers and woodworking and that sort of thing um and that is full of cruise people that i don't know but last year when i started ordering more things i decided to try posting in there and i introduced myself and i'm like some of you probably know me most of you probably don't but you know i am a cruise person i've also sort of accidentally become a fashion person and i make these things and here's what they look like and it turned out that uh, I actually got a fair, I ended up getting like a fair amount of sales through those people. And I tend to, I don't really have for myself, I don't have a lot of different sales. What I tend to have is the same people buying again and again and again. A lot of that I think is because I, spend a lot of time trying to develop a relationship um and i don't know i mean obviously i would like to have like a higher volume and different people too but it tends to not really be that it tends to more be like you know somebody will place an initial order and then uh basically every time i have a sale that person will come back and I don't know. For for me, there, there's actually something really quite nice about that. Um, I try to, um, and because I get to be, know those people, I try to um, make sure that, you know, I, I make things feel like we're sort of making things together in a way. A uh, good example of that, and I wish I could show you this, um, is that back when the wrap dresses came out a couple months ago, uh, I had posted a few, both to my own Facebook page and to my art one, and you know a lot of people like them. And but I did get two comments from two different people who had messaged me privately and were like, "Hey, you know, your dresses look great, but um, you know, they're most of them. They were like a floral design, and the focus was on like the center. And they're like, you you may not want to do that because." Uh, you might not want people like focusing on that area of the body. You might want to like move that somewhere else. Uh, so like one of them was like, it, it was a, like a flower uh, pattern. And uh, I basically had it so that the, the center was on the stomach, which uh, it, it turns out it's not always a good idea to do that. Uh, and since two different people had said that, uh, I ended up making an alternate version of it uh, that I uploaded separately where uh, Sandrine had like shifted everything like dramatically to the right. So it ended up being at like the lower right corner, which turned out to be great because uh, the people who liked the original one could still get it. The people who did not like the fact that the focus was on the center were very happy because now the focus was different. And a whole lot of people who wouldn't have had an opinion of it uh, either way 
all of a sudden now realize that there were like five new styles to choose from and they like those better even um and it, that was something i never would have thought of uh to do uh and to be perfectly honest part of that is because i'm a guy that normally wears jeans and shirts and i don't I don't know a lot of these things. I'm, I'm sort of figuring it out. So having somebody tell me was really, really helpful. Um, this, is, this is really great, Joseph. And if I may, uh, you're getting so, much, so many props. I don't know if you'll get to see it. So I kind of want to share some of it and just say thank you. You're doing great. Everybody's loving you and supporting you. It's really the core of the community. And we feel it here too. Like oh, you have your own you. flavor and that's what we want. You, Diana, Tracy, everyone, that's that's perfect. You share from that space and... Um, what uh, Lindell was asking, so what size shirts do you order that fit well? I have a client looking for a double X large and I ordered some extra large to see if they would fit. So what you're wearing right now, was that what yeah. size? Um, so th this Kiki, uh, the Kiki T, uh, this is actually a three X. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, cause uh, this has come up a couple of times in the, uh, in the Facebook group, um, if you're a member of that. Um, about questions about sizing. I will say that I have had, uh, out of all the orders I've placed, I think I had two where the sizing didn't quite work. And in at least one of those cases, I know for sure it is because the person did not measure. Um, and that's something that like, I try to emphasize really, really heavily. And like, I, th I think people, after I explain that everything is custom made and it's by hand, uh, I think they understand that that is important to do. Because initially, like you know, I'll be collecting orders and I'll, you know, I'll ask about sizing, and people will be like, "Well, I'm usually in Excel," and I'm like, "I believe you, but also please measure." Uh, <laughs> Thank you. That's really, so helpful. Really sure. <laughs> um, but because of that, I can honestly say that you know, with the exception of like the one person who didn't, virtually everybody tells me that stuff fits exactly the way that they expect it to. Um, and it's, I got to say, like, it's an amazing thing for, for me, uh, you know, to, I've made art for so many years. I have applied to so many art shows. I've been rejected for all of them. Uh, I had really, at the time that I did this, I, uh, initially, I was like, you know, thinking that probably, you know, it had been 10 years, I hadn't had any success at all. I was probably right around, I was ready to be done. Like, and then all of a sudden, like it, it just turned out that I was looking in the wrong place, like that clothing, which was something I never thought about, like, I didn't even know that this was a thing you could do. Um, but my stuff tends to translate much better to that apparently and it makes it accessible to a whole bunch of people who like my wall art but who would never buy it and some of those people now like most of the people i think that are my most repeat customers have never bought wall art from me um and i don't know it just it it's been an amazing thing to to watch um one of the things that's been really helpful is uh, my day job is uh, actually I um, I make I make things uh, I create fiction I do music covers I do artwork I have started in the past year to sort of blend the two things together so like for example one of the things that I do in my day job is I do custom paintings for people uh, you know they tell me what they want me to paint and I do it um, over the last probably nine months I have started a thing where uh, not only will I make you the custom painting, I will also make you clothing based on it. And that has been a really neat thing to watch that develop. I really wish I could show you a, f a picture of this uh, and awesome. maybe I can like I do no that idea. later. But there was a thing that I did last year um, where somebody had requested from me uh, to write a short story uh, about a guy who wears really fancy pants and had then requested a painting of uh, somebody, uh, basically a painting based on that, and then had requested that I make Carla Palazzo pants that had the text of the story on it. 
uh, and I've never seen anything like that. And Sandrine actually, like we did it. It was amazing to me. It, it took a lot of like adjusting, but I've never seen anything else like that. And that is an idea that I never would have had in a million years. Uh, like I, I cackled with, with uh, you know, delight when uh, she proposed it to me. Um, so I have pictures of that. I, I wish I could had thought I had to, to share them, but um, I had another thing where uh, a client had asked me to, uh, to paint like a stained glass snails, which I did. And they now have that not only as an art print, but as a tunic. And uh, they get, it's just, it's been a wonderful thing for me to, um, to get messages where, you know, people tell me, you know, I got like three compliments on my shirt today, or I got three compliments on my dress today. It's, it's been great. Um, a lot of what I did in the beginning to help with that is like, I, I, fully believe I could not have done this nearly as well if I did not have sort of a, a team. Uh, one of the things that I did in the beginning when I first started is that um, I wasn't charging full price uh, or what I would charge now anyway for people. Like I ordered a, a number of pieces uh, and didn't charge as much for them. And I sort of made a mini team of people and it sort of became a thing of um i knew that if the clothing looked good enough that people would ask uh you know oh you know i love that dress where did you get it and i could sort of have that person sell for me in a way um you know to sort of be oh well you know actually uh joseph from chromatic verse uh made this and here is his website if you want to look at the other things that he has and i have gotten sales that way um okay. and i mean honestly and this came up the other day in a discussion too i i promote my work a lot i say a lot of good things about it um and hopefully that's kind of that kind of works the thing that i found that is a thousand times more successful is like when people who aren't me talk about it. Um, a lot of folks recently have started to post pictures of themselves wearing my stuff. And part of that is stuff that they uh, organically decided to do. Part of it was I sort of privately asked them to do it. There's, I find there's a huge difference between me posting like the silhouettes, which are nice, but the people who have themselves received clothing posting themselves wearing it like the likes and comments like skyrocketed it's it's not even close so whenever possible um i this little team that i've assembled uh, i always try to ask them like you know if you can send me photos of yourself wearing stuff and then if you wouldn't mind if you would post it uh, and like I'll, you know, and I'll share it. And I don't know if that's that's true for, you know, for everybody, but I, I found for me trying to have my customers talk to like having other potential customers see that from my customers, it has been a huge thing. Uh, it's, it's more, uh, it's been more effective than just me talking about, you know, myself. I think I think everyone would agree, even like art or not. You know, I definitely think that's a that's a thing. I saw Tracy going, yes, yes, <laughs> as you were talking, and I see um, even Tracy, another a webinar attendee, but Tracy, the artist right here with us today, also saying cross promotion is key to most marketing. So Joseph's comments are spot on. Um, this is it's really really beautiful. Everybody is so happy to hear from you, and would love if you'd like to share those uh, Palazzo photos on the community, uh, if you would like to do that. If you yes. have any, you can do that. Then everybody can see what you were, um, visualize what you were talking about. It's like, it reminds me of Tracy, what she does also with, it's like the art inside the art, like the Russian dolls, you know? And there's like a hidden, mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? There's a whole journey as you hop into the painting that becomes wearable art, that becomes on a silhouette, of drawn silhouette of you wearing your art that has a painting on it. <laughs> exactly exactly mind blown so it, it's yeah it's so inspiring and beautiful thank you yeah. so much joseph i know that we could all continue listening to you 
for, for a long time because this is really inspirational the same way Tracy was sharing, but I do want to um, shed light on Diana that's here with us, our third panelist today. Um, Absolutely. Have our, so thank you so, so much uh, here. And now on to Diana, who um, is, has also been with us for about a year. Um, I will let her introduce herself as well. And I think she has a, a completely uh, different approach as well that crosses over Tracy and Joseph, but uh, touches on a different kind of market, maybe an approach as well. So all to you, Diana. Thank you so much for your patience. Hi, everyone. I'm Diana Raiella. Uh, Joseph, you said it was hard going second. Well, I think it's even worse going last and trying to uh, uh, raise that, uh, raise to that bar. So I may be a little bit more low key, but I think probably a different approach that some of you may be at as well. I am your Canadian representative. I am uh, from the London, Ontario area. I recently moved to a, a small community outside of London called Irlington, but uh, lived in London most of my life and uh, uh, have enjoyed it here. Now, uh, my background is I've been retired for almost eight years. I was a high school principal for many, many years. I was a, a superintendent at the board level for many years. I worked at the Ministry of Education in Ontario, supervising school boards uh, in my latter years. So uh, as you can imagine, and those of you who are working while you're doing your art, there isn't a lot of time to kind of get into the nitty gritty of your art. And my art was on the back burner for, for many, many years. So I am just in my, my glory now being able to pursue my artistic options. Um, well, I better show you what I'm wearing since Joseph and, and uh, Tracy did that as well. I've got on the Marianne dress. I think it, yeah, Marianne dress. I don't know if you can see yeah, from there. Back up a little, little bit. Closer. There we go. Uh, every time I get a new dress from uh, La Gallerista, and I am definitely a dress person, uh, I keep saying, ah, oh, it's my new favorite. It's my new favorite. So um, I think being able to model it, being able to share photos of it, uh, both Tracy and both and Joseph has said, people need to see it. They need to see it on you. They need to feel it. They need to see the colors and so on. And, and I think that's going to be the greatest seller. Uh, my background in art, I did not study art. I studied obviously educational administration and, uh, but I have always been artistic. I do acrylic painting. I love abstract. I do pore painting and I've seen on the Facebook community and wonderful pour painting um, done by the various artists. And speaking of that community, I want to thank you, Julie and Le Galeries, that it is a wonderful form. It's a wonderful form to share. And not only to share, but just to, I'm in awe and humbled by the level of expertise and, and artistic ability out there. And um, it's, it's just really encouraging and, and versatility of everybody. Everybody has such a different style. Like it, it's just really so amazing. So I enjoy going, being on there and my apologies to those of you who have seen me way too many times. I'm kind of working <laughs> on a, a lookbook right now. And my husband, who's not a professional photographer, but in retirement, he's enjoying doing that. So he takes pictures of me and my clothing and I'm creating a little book that, that I can use at the very least, just my own record of my life as an art, artistic designer. Uh, I have done, uh, okay, acrylic and pour. I've done metal work, uh, not metal work, but art on metal. I didn't really have anything to show you, but I will show you my metal art. These are my, uh, I'm kind of into the painted lady kind of thing. And these, this is what I call garden art, and people can put them on their uh, uh, fences and decks, and they're kind of waterproof and so on. And so when you saw my painted lady, I have, I model my Felicia dress with the painted lady on it as well. So I have kind of gone back into my archives of my metal work of my acrylic, uh, acrylic paintings, my paint pours, and start looking for things that might look really wonderful on clothing. And I think it was Tracy that mentioned in terms of the whole fashion and clothing that um, I am very much into fashion and I'm very much into art and to fuse the two of them um, was just my dream, but I did not want it to look like an iron on transfer of my art on a t-shirt. I don't like tacky, so, uh, and my apologies if people like that sort of thing, but. To, to have your art totally encompass the piece of clothing is, is it's just wonderful. And then to have it so well made and being so, it's just a bonus. So I think 
as far as the artists all out there, I might be a little bit. I love doing the art. I'm not out for the big time sales, although I will share that and kind of give some tips about that. But you know, if people love my art and they want to buy it, awesome. I send them to the re retail site. I have the storefront. But I don't buy the clothing. I don't have stockpiles of stuff that then I go on Facebook or Marketplace or SD or wherever. I do not sell. I don't want to be bothered. And I, I just want to make the art. Uh, I want to see you wear my art, which is wonderful. But I don't want to take care of the, um, you know, collecting money or making sure that you were pleased with all of that sort of stuff. So that this whole venue for the Legale East has been Wonderful, because they take care of all of that. Is that the most profitable way for the artist? No, it is not. Realistically, you will make more money if you buy it wholesale and you sell it on your own site or whatever you're going to do, and you make whatever profit margin you want to make. Doing it on the site, La Galerista, of course, if you uh, sell a lot, you'll make more of a royalty. But if you're minimum, you know, you're going to do 10 to 25 percent. So it's not a big money maker, but I, again, that's not all that important to to me. So um, I, I, I think I'm pretty low key about it. Um, previous sales okay, for me. So I've been at this for about a year and I didn't start until I saw the clothing. So I did some stuff and I thought, OK, this is kind of cool. I bought some things, got them, really liked them had my husband take some pictures of me modeling it, uh, put it on my social media site. Then I opened my storefront. And you get that flurry of sales uh, it, at the outset when you first start doing it. So it happened to coincide with a, a promotional sale that uh, Le Gallery East was doing. I think it was 21% off or something. So I posted my stuff in conjunction with that sale. You get that flurry of retail sales, mostly family and friends that want to support you. And I've seen that on the forum. People are saying, okay, I've been up for three weeks. How come nobody's buying anything? Or it's been a month. Well, you really have to pound the pavement to get those sales. And to get the, the repeat sales, um, you really have to be out there promoting. And so I would get that. Now, in the course of a year, if you want to kind of get a bigger picture of things, I have had maybe, I can't remember exactly, 58, 60 sales retail. Okay, so I don't know if that's good, if it's bad. Um, and out of those 60 people, maybe hmm, eight or nine or people, I don't know, like somehow saw my stuff somewhere or a friend of a friend of a friend or whatever. So. Not a lot of money, but it's been fun. And uh, the only thing I would love to know is what exactly they're buying. I don't know if there's an opportunity to be able to say, oh, you see these retail sales, you see how much they're spending, but you don't know how much they're, I mean, what they're particularly buying. So that might be a question to, to you, Julie, is yes. that would be data. I think that would be useful so you know what's yeah. popular in your, in your community. And guess anyway. what? It's coming. It's actually okay. something that we're yeah. looking into. We're going to just to tie. See, I love how life works just perfectly. Like you said, oh, I don't know if I want to, what am I going to say? I'm the last one. No, this is super relevant because people want to be inspired. And this is what we're, we're doing together. And then they want to know the nitty gritty of the marketing, the business. People ask us, can yeah. I make money? How do I do it? So you're just tuning into that, Diana, so beautifully. And okay. you're opening up the door to um, what we had spoken about on, on a, I think the webinar it's the past month or maybe in December when Thierry joined us, uh, I think that was January. So about the disconnected storefront, that might not be the official name. Um, I saw some questions about it again on, on the Facebook. And I think Joseph was like, wait, what is that again? I think you asked. So the disconnected storefront is actually tying into your actual storefront that you have right now where you're paid royalties on the sales that you make, right? Different incrementals, depending on the number of, of uh, the amount of sales. The disconnected storefront is going to give you a similar platform in its look and visual, but is going to allow you to choose your own retail price. So that you that way you can increase your margin the way you want to. So if you want to sell the dress, $100, you can if you want to sell it 300 because you have the market or for a special event or something, a benefit, whatever it is, you can. So this yeah. is going to allow so much more space for that. In that, we would like to be able to offer different features to help you with your marketing in a very practical sense. So who's buying? What are they buying? Even more than who, what? But the who is also important because we've had artists come up and be like, I'd like to say, send a thank you note to every single person that comes and buy something. I never met them. D Diana, you're mm -hmm. saying I have eight, I have nine. 
I'd love to say thank you or offer them a little promo yeah. code or something, you know? So these yes. things we're looking into, now we're in the stage where we embrace the greatness of the ideas and we're so on board with wanting to give you these tools. We just have to look more in implementing it and an integration part of the, like the integration part tech wise and how we can do that which is also tying in to our privacy policy that needs to be updated. We need to make some decisions on that because currently, even though they're your clients in the true sense of the word, they still go through our platform. So we protect their information legally, right? Sorry for the little like, yeah, it's not the, it's as a creative as a talk, but it's very important for you to know. So just so you know what we're doing in the backstage of things and why it can take weeks, months, and you know, because they're, they're, um, it's, it's part of the restructuring of the business and the way we serve you. So these are things we're really looking into because we want to be able to share these statistics with you. Like Joseph was saying, like, oh, is, I don't know, most people are just buying this dress or this top, you know, I'd like to know. So we're really looking into that right now. And also fun features, maybe we'll be able to integrate other things that allow um, your, your customers to comment and maybe give a review on a product or something. But that is further down the line but the seeds have been planted and are definitely being looked at right now. Does, does that kind of touch? Yeah, that's, yeah? that's going to be, uh, I think, really, really helpful. And, and that will help you hone in on, on your promotion uh, in terms of what, and, and when you're curating your storefront, you know, you might say, I'm going to get rid of a few things and, and continue to focus on another area. So shall I continue or do you, uh, do you, yeah. want, do you oh, want, yeah, you can give us a few minutes if, if, and it's okay. If people need to leave, cause I said an hour and 15, you can, and we'll record and send you the recording. This is very precious. So feel free to, to continue dear okay. Diana and stay if you can. Yes. Okay. Cause I want to uh, focus on, on the boutique sales as, as yeah. well. But, but prior to that, like I wasn't doing a lot of selling in my work. It really wasn't in uh, something that I wanted to do. When the pandemic started, I got in into it more. And when you post more stuff online, people start asking about it. And so I was, like I say, I was doing my metal work. I was doing uh, painting on canvas. I was painting coasters. I was painting jean jackets and t-shirts and whatever. And uh, people started asking, hey, I would like to, I would like some of that. And then I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do a little bit of it. But uh, I, I wasn't into doing commission work and wasn't interested in that. So again, with the Le Galeriste idea that worked out, out very, very well. Uh, another thing that you might want to explore, I know it's sort of just off in left field here, but um, I sold scarves to, to a, a local boutique for their lifestyle box. Now, I know some, you know, some boutiques and do these boxes, you know, where monthly subscribers get them in, in, in the mail or whatever. And uh, this, this little boutique is a home and uh, uh, kind of a home goods store and, and have my scarves as part of it. And you put your business card in there. And I had what was, I used what's called a put my postcard. And it's got my uh, QR code down there. It's got a bit of information about the fabric. It's got a bit of information about me. And those are all tucked in the box as well. And that was helpful. Now, I've, I've already shown my business card that I uh, showed on the forum. Um, but the postcards are kind of useful if you want to add a little bit more information uh, that you want to put in a box or, or include it with an outfit if you're um, selling it privately to someone. I probably have almost bought one piece of everything that the galleries to make. <laughs> so I know that's not possible for everybody. And I think that the money that I make goes towards the clothing that I buy from the store. And that's okay with me because I enjoy it. And my philosophy has always been, number one, I only make what I know I would wear. And yeah, is that a good business sense? Maybe not. Doesn't matter to me because I want to be able to wear it and um, what I would buy. So that, I've done that. I figured, you know, if nothing ever came of this, I'm going to have some nice clothing that's about me, my art, and so on. So um, one thing I would suggest when you're buying your own art, this is just my opinion, when you make a piece of art, you sometimes you really love it. Like the one I'm wearing here, I really love this art. It's a photograph of uh, reflections in the Kingston waterfront. And then I took it into Procreate. Tracy, I use Procreate a lot as well. <laughs> and I made it into a piece of art. And I could buy tons of pieces just with this art. I love it. But I thought, you know, when I go somewhere, I want to show different art. So virtually everything that I've ordered from the Galleries is 
you know, the skirt is a different piece of art from the dress, from whatever. So I try and get a broad scope of my art. So when I show it to people, I have a variety of art pieces to see. But again, it's tempting. I do have multiples of some things, so I have to confess that. Okay, in boutiques, I have been in a, a boutique in London since October, and it was just a fluke. I don't do cold calling, and I know you should. If that's what you want to do, I don't knock on doors and say, here, can you buy my stuff? I wear my clothing a lot and I carry my business cards. And I think Medge in the last web webinar was talking about, you know, how she would give out her cards. And, and I will do that uh, if somebody asks. So again, again, you are your best promoter. But I happen to be shopping at this boutique. It's one of my favorite boutiques. It's a little bit of a higher end uh, boutique, which kind of fits La Galerista's prices too, I think a bit. I mean, I think La Galerista is sort of mid, it's not really, really high end, but it's not cheap either. So this boutique fit it, but I happened to be wearing a cardigan with my artwork and the owner was there and she loved my cardigan and asked, you know, where I got it. And of course, thus begins the story about, you know, how it's my art and blah, 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 blah. Well, that led to me having an appointment the next week uh, to show her, uh, a lot of my artwork and I happen to have a fair number of pieces. So I went in, I had prepared my uh, iPad Pro with lots of pictures of me and other people modeling my clothing. I talked about the fabric, I talked about the company, I did all of that to her and her staff. And I was really hoping that, oh, maybe if she picks a dress or two, um, they might try to sell them and see how it goes. Well, uh, I was overwhelmed. She says, I want this, I want that, I want, I want that, I want six of that. So I've got scribbling in my notebook. By the time all was said and done, she had bought 156 pieces. Uh, so 26 different clothing with all in different art. I'm thinking, how did this just happen? You know, so it was, it was a fluke. It was lucky. I wasn't out there getting it, but it, because it's a local boutique, because I was wearing my art clothing. Um, and I like shopping there and I knew that she would probably like my stuff and I was really hoping that she'd like my painted ladies and she loved them so she brought a couple of really bold pieces with the ladies I should show you with my uh this is a bag with my one of my whoops bold ladies on it she and she bought tons of stuff so when the clothing comes in three weeks later, she does Facebook Live fashion shows and invited me to come. I wore one of my pieces. The models all wore just my clothing and I commentated. I talked about the genesis of the art. People like that. They like to know that, oh, I did this poor painting. I took a macro photo of this piece of art. I enlarged it, did it on my uh, my iPad and voila, here's the art. They like to hear that sort of thing. Sales were, she was so pleased, sales went really, really well. Uh, short, uh, long story short, she's ordered three times since then. The next order was like 140 units, then we were at 130 units. The thing is, every time I go in, I, bring, I wear something that I have just received or bring in a few new things. She inevitably wants it. You know, and so there I am saying, okay, we do more orders. Like it's just been, it's been wild. So she's probably ordered up, I don't know, 460, 470 units so far. One day I was walking in with a tote bag because I was carrying my iPad and all of that, one of the totes I made. She says, I want that. And I had no clue that a tote bag was even in her, um, her vision. She not only bought the tote bag that I was showing, but bought five others and six of each one. So you just, I, I guess I just go to show you, if you just don't know, you know, what, what is going to, it, you just, until you have it out there, until you show people, you don't know what's going to strike their fancy. So um, again, you may think, oh, 460 pieces of clothing, boy, you must be making a lot of money. No, I'm doing, I mean, I've made money, but it's not a lot. Boutiques, particularly small boutiques and high-end boutiques, they expect a two-time markup on wholesale. So, and usually even more than two times, if they can get a 2.2, 2.3 markup on wholesale. So if you're selling wholesale $50, they're going to want to sell it for a hundred or $120. So, you know, you, I don't personally think you can probably do more than 10 to 20% royalty before it gets 
for a small boutique, they're going to say, no, that's too expensive for me. So, you know, you, you figure it out with your boutique, whether, you know, you could do 10% or 15, or it might depend on the item. But uh, so if you sell, but you sell more. So you'll make more because the volume is higher. So anyway, I think that for me, I had to make the decision, is this a hobby or is this a business for me? And it, it is a hobby for me. And unless suddenly I start getting all these boutiques. And in fact, my uh, boutique owner just said to me the other day that there is a boutique in this other city that the owner is really interested in my stuff. And so she may be, you know, they're going to be talking and who knows, maybe I'll have another boutique. But thank you for the boutique portal. Now that will be easier, I hope, yes. because I don't have to make the orders. They can go in and do the orders. So a couple little final points. I know I'm probably going on too long. Oh, you're but, great. Uh, and everybody's <laughs> appreciating the advice. And they're like, they're loving the practicality that you're bringing, which yeah. is really good. So uh, awesome. keep going. So I'll, I'll bring it to a close. But uh, okay. I think... Again, repeating what I know that, that Joseph and, and Tracy have said, it's about getting your work into the public eye. It's about a finding a, a store, a boutique, an audience that fits your art and your art fits the store. I'm not going to go take my art to a store that I know is not my style or that they're not. So don't, I I'm not offended if you don't like my art. It's just not working for you. So don't be offended if someone says no to your boutique. It's just they're considering their clients and so on. So uh, that really, really is important to me to make sure that when my clothing is in a store with my art on it, that it is about me. So it better reflect me. And, and vice versa. I, mean, I know that's what the boutique wants as well. Um, this boutique actually is carrying a few of my canvas prints and, and some of the pillows that I've made as well, which is, which is kind of cool. She uses them in the background. Business cards. She has my business cards, as I showed you. She keeps them at her cash register. So what I did with the boutique, when I sold her clothing, I told her that I would make the, the pieces that she selected exclusive to her. She loved that because I took them off my site then. I unpublished them. And so that the only place you can get these palazzo pants is her place. So it's not as if I was doing huge amounts on retail anyway, so I don't think it matters. And if somebody messaged me privately and said, I really want those palazzos, but they're not on your site, I would make that happen for them. But she, she did love the exclusivity of it. And she promotes it when she does her fashion show. She says, only in North America, you know, the only place for, for Diana Rayella art. So it, it's been kind of cool. Um, I've given her the postcards as well. So she knows um, my clothing. About a week ago, I was in a fashion show again because she got another order in and I was able to model this time. You've seen some of those on the Facebook uh, community. I've shown you my modeling. But what I do then is I make pictures of all of the clothes I post them on my Instagram, um, my Instagram, um, doing a bit of TikTok, um, and I tap larger following an artist uh, and seen on her site. And the good thing about being in a boutique is there's two things. Number one, people can try on the clothing. As you know now, I mean, um, with no returns, and I get that. I get that 100%. But people are leery about ordering online to begin with. And when there's no returns, they may be less likely to, to order. Uh, so when you're in a boutique, you can just say, if you're local, obviously, you can say, yeah, you like that uh T-shirt, go try it on, and then you can go to my site and order it. So they do like that. And I think I'm getting a little bit of business that way. So people who are buying the stuff at the boutique say, I'd love to see it in another kind of artwork. And uh, then they can go to my site. So that might generate more, more business on my site. We shall see. Um, as I said, I'm creating a lookbook. So it's going to be a 12 by 12 book. So if I ever get into this and want to take it to a boutique it'll be uh, larger pictures of me modeling everything that I have because people need to see it uh, Sharon the owner of, of the boutique just to, an aside the the major things that she has bought from me are the things that I showed her even though I have lots of art and I have lots of styles she, the things that she picked 
are the things that I shall hood her. Now, the book of third order, she got a little bit more adventurous and uh, ordered a different piece of art. So it's very cool for me. I just was at the store yesterday because she had a new shipment of patty tunics and that. And I think, wow, it's really cool. I'm seeing, I have seen every piece of my art on clothing now. Uh, which is which is really nice so that I can actually now say to you that yes this looks wonderful on the patty tunic or this looks great on on a cape dress or whatever I just got ordered today too so I was so excited I have another kimono I must have six kimonos but <laughs> anyway um buy and wear your own clothes you know I that that's my my biggest uh tip to you make sure the store fits your art and you fit the store uh, what do I have? Post on social media. I love posting stuff. I don't care what happens to it. I love making um, uh, ads. I put my clothing on my art. So as you said, I think, Julie, art becomes art. And not as creative as Tracy, for sure. But I do have my own art as a background, and I stick the models on the background. Try to make your post creative, innovative, anything that maybe jumps out at you. And even when it gets a little bit tiresome, just keep doing it. I mean, there will be people maybe aren't buying right now. But if you're posting one thing every single day, something's going to catch their fancy. And that might be the day they decide to buy. So I, I would just keep at it and, and have fun doing it. Um, I think that might be all I have to say. <laughs> I'm just having a lot of fun. And, and thank you for, for letting me share. I know these are not uh, rocket science kinds of things that I've talked about, but I think I'm just kind of the non-artisty kind of person having fun with fashion and art. And that's what I, that's why I started with it. That's why I continue. I love it. And um, I look forward to seeing what everybody else is producing on the forum. This is so great, Diana. Thank you so much. It's really, don't underestimate your contribution. It's beautiful. And, and it, it actually sparked the conversation about the boutique portal again. So for the ones that missed the chat, um, and just to make it as clear as possible, I sent the form. I can also include it in the um, thank you email, the boutique portal form, through which you'll just enter the boutique. Uh, so one form per boutique that you're collaborating with. It doesn't have to be a confirmed partnership. You could just be saying, oh, I spotted these three stores in my area that I want to connect with. So I'll just go ahead and create their account so they have an actual link that's their own that they can use to go see my prices and my merchandise and you know and then and then go from there. Uh, you can also send us your confirmed partnerships for the ones that already have them. Um, you click that form and it's just a few question contact information and your selected profit margin. So as I mentioned earlier, we suggest anywhere in between 10, 20, maybe 25%. Diana said the same thing, but you can go higher, you can go lower. It's, it's really your business. So you can have fun with it, test it out. Um, as she was mentioning, you know, it depends on, on the, the retail price they're going for as well. So, uh, so yeah, I see Joseph, yes? Yeah, uh, question, question about that. So it yes. sounds like, if I'm not misunderstanding, we could create a potential, um, I don't know if it's a, like an account, but we could create something for a boutique, even if we like, even if we don't have yet an established yeah. relationship with them, and we could use that as part of the thing. Absolutely. Like we go, we go in, you know, we we are wearing our clothing, and then as we're talking to them, um, you know, they have a QR code, and they can they can check what is available. But, but we can do that before we've confirmed that we're yes. like we can do it as part of a pitch and yeah. we don't actually have to oh fabulous yes and what's nice is that it's it, awesome. it, it, they're nice intimate settings anyway so great question joseph you know you can just do a little one-on-one -on -one and um leah is the one who's taking care of uh, creating all uh the accounts for the store managers and, and owners so as soon as you fill out the form she receives that information she creates the account for you again i'm reminding you all this is a very beta version so the reason we allowed ourselves to release um an imperfect uh, feature is because we wanted to give the opportunity to the artist to co-create this with us because you're 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 living it it's the best way to know what works what doesn't what you like what you don't um so in this uh, beta version it also helps you because the one the artist that already had these partnerships um like diana said she's like i don't want to manage the customer uh, care i don't want to take the payments i don't want to do all that so this just gives you a direct answer to that to help you manage your time and not have to deal with the logistics of things Knowing very much some imperfections when I say that is that for now, 
what will happen is that they'll have their equivalent of a portal, just like you, and they'll have access to the section, the My Products section on your portal. So they come into their own um, account and then they'll see all the products that you have. So why is it imperfect compared to what we're gonna release later on in the year is that right now the products will just be shown as you're showing them on your portal. Eventually you'll be able to organize them in collections and only sh share certain collections with the store. Here's my spring collection. Boom, I give access to this store owner of this boutique. Um, you're going to be able to move with the aesthetics way more and make it your own. So right now it's pretty just dry, but gives you all the tools you need so they can enter their own credit card information. They can order their, the number of units they want. They can see your prices. Um, what's nice about this is that in the form, you will enter the profit margin you wish to make, as we were mentioning earlier, so 10, 15, 20, 25%. Uh, and the price that they will see will be the price that includes your margin. So before you would go, uh, the artist kind of had to say, okay, I know that if I order this dress, it costs me one unit is 100, 10 units is 67, then I have to calculate my, pro you know, and it was kind of, yeah, it wasn't as clear as we could make it. Now they'll just see, oh, one dress, $78. Thank you. I order five, it goes down to 52. Boom, done. So this is what it's going to help with. Yes, Joseph. Sorry. Uh, no, it's great because you're prompting, <laughs> you know how this is going to help us in customer care because we get so many questions and yeah. we one person and the rest of the community doesn't get the answer. So yeah, this is a away. whole new idea for me. <laughs> So um, about the percentages, is that going to be across the board or do we have a way potentially to do that, like for to, to have the percentages be different per item? Just for example, like yeah. for for scarves, my markup is higher than it is for more expensive things like yeah. uh, say like the Marianne dress or something like that. So is it I, I mean, that probably also sounds like it would be frustrating and complicated to like do that specifically for each individual thing but is it possible to have the to have like you know you have a uh, an item listed and you can choose what the percentage is for that item or is it universal for every item yes for now it's universal to every item however mm -hmm. it can change from store to another right so you can have one store that you're going to give them 10 percent. you know them they, they're a small business you want to encourage them you take 10 percent. but you can you can go with a higher end that has a lot cool. of clientele you could do 20 uh and it generalizes itself to uh, every single item but I'm, I'm taking note of it because i feel it's a great idea and who knows terry and the the tech team they're really awesome they're really great and the things sometimes that we're like oh could this actually be done they could do for us or they'll tell us no or have a better idea so i will um slip that little note and see, because maybe it will be definitely not in the better version, but in the improved ones, um, it'll be, it'll be structured differently. Anyways, even the aesthetics are going to be different. So there might be more options available right now. We're just copying your, my products. It's like copy paste. And we just give the uh, store owner access to that. We also are doing this um, in a preliminary way because we didn't know if there was actually going to be an interest. Are we talking about 5% of our artists that are wanting this, or is there actually, yes, it, this is so helpful, we want this, you know? Um, yes, Bonnie, is this available? Yes, it is. Boutique will only see the built-in profit margin. Exactly, that's why it's so precious. The boutique will only see the built-in profit margin, right? So it, it, it includes the cost price of the item, the whole sum, and your profit, yes. Because when the boutique would see what you pay, it could cause a little bit of a, it, an unease, you know, and um, talking about money is, is an art and that is just something we can remove to make it easier. Um, purchase, will the boutique have access to purchase and see other artists? No, absolutely not. They only have access to yours. And that's what we grant as access when Leah creates those accounts for you. Okay. And so again, one form per boutique, it's a better version. So please be very patient and understanding. I know you are, but uh, bear with us as we move through this. And actually the more people we have using them, the faster will come the improved versions also. So we're going with what's coming. Okay. Thank you so much for staying on longer. Thank you, sweet teammates for staying. Carrie had a meeting with Terry, so she had to leave. Thank you so much, you guys. This has been really amazing. And I trust that it'll really inspire um, all the artists that will come across this. It'll be shared on YouTube publicly. So please feel free to share with your own community as well and go back through it if you have any questions and things like that.
I will share, like, as we said, we'll share the, the chat transcript. Um, and I'll send all the link as well to the newcomers for the community on Facebook, any other pertinent information that you guys could use, a link to the part one as well, the boutique form. And if there's anything, if we miss any questions, please, uh, please forgive us. Um, but you can also email us directly at customer care. And uh, yes, Kathy, your question. Yes, let me, give me two seconds just to see. Yes, I'll go through the, um, we'll go through the transcript and if there's any uh, missing questions, we'll address them. If not, please bear with us. We're a small team. We love what we do very much, but we're very human. So sometimes we forget or miss something with the, the fire that goes on here and, and the beauty of it. So just don't hesitate. Just write us team at legalrist.com. Our sweet Leah is here to help you and the rest of the team as usual. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you. Anything else, team artists? Good? Okay. Thank you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful week.